friends, the message this morning is being channeled through practitioner Jennifer Livingston. And so uh, Jennifer is, well, practitioner as well as a member of our board of trustees. So I invite you to put your hands together and do welcome her warmly to the podium. Good morning, friends. And let me add my own words of welcome to all of you and to those of you tuned into this, our practitioner Sunday morning service on the World Wide Web. And now let me just get these right, you know, so that I can see you better. Now that I'm seeing you all, what a difference. <laughs> I'd like to thank Sandy for the guided meditation and the affirmative prayer of oneness to set the stage for this morning's talk or encouragement, as Reverend John likes to call it. Um, it seems like only last week that we were ready to welcome the new year. And already we are almost at the end of January. And as is customary, we have as our theme for this year, 2020, year of plenty, right? We all know it. Friends, it is up to each one of us to determine what plenty means to us. But if we truly want to create wholeness and abundance in every area of our life this year, then join me as we look at how we can develop a prosperous state of mind. So now you have figured out the theme. So what do we mean by a prosperous state of mind? Well, first, let me go to the dictionary.com, and it says, prosperous is, the, is derived from the Latin word prosperous. I don't speak Latin, hope I got that right. But it says, means doing well. The word is an adjective, and which is often describes a person or a person's future. But it can apply to anything that is experiencing growth or success. While in our Science of Mind textbook, page 622, <laughs> Prosperous is, says it is the outpicturing of substance in our affairs. Everything in the universe is for us, nothing is against us. If we accept that this is so, then we must believe and know that having a prosperous state of mind carries over into every area of our lives, including our health, our wealth, happiness, success, and our relationships. When we learn to trust the universe, we shall be happy, prosperous, and well. The key, however, to having a prosperous state of mind begins with building a consciousness of abundance. And to do so, we must do what? Be mindful of our thoughts. It was Ralph Waldo Emerson that said, and I quote, a man is what he thinks about 24 hours a day. Thus, we cannot afford to entertain a thought of lack, limitation, or poverty of any kind. We are told in Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. End of that reading. In the book, The Art of Abundance, 10 Rules for a Prosperous Life, copies of which are available in the book room, free plug, Reverend Anne, Dr. Dennis Merritt Jones, New Thought Luminary, relates the following story of the parable of two travelers. And I'd like to share that with you now. Once upon a time, a man seeking abundance and fortune traveled from town to town, but never seeming to find a prosperous township that offered enough promise for him to remain there. And so he would travel on. One day, while walking to the next township, he approached a wise man who was just exiting the gates of the town the traveler was entering. The traveler stopped the wise man and said, 
Kind sir, can you tell me about the town from which you have just come? What are the people who live there like? Are they prosperous? Is there abundance and wealth to be found there? The, my, the wise man replied, first stranger, tell me, what are the people like in the last town you visited? The traveler replied, oh, they were a greedy bunch of people who only looked out for themselves, never willing to share a morsel. It was not a prosperous town. The people were unwelcoming, suspicious, unkind, and stingy. There was no prosperity or good fortune to be found anywhere. I shook the dust from my sandals quickly and would never go back. The wise man paused and then replied, Ah, uh, you best move on then, because I have a hunch you will discover that the citizens of this town are very much the same. A short distance further down the road, the wise man met a wayward traveler, another person, entering the township from the same direction, also seeking abundance and fortune. And the traveler asked the same question of the wise man. Good sir, can you tell me about the town from which you have just come? What are the people who live there like? Is there abundance and wealth to be found here? Again, the wise man replied, first stranger, tell me what were the people like in the town from which you have just come? The traveler replied, oh, they were the most generous people. Everywhere I went, people welcomed me with open arms and offered me comfort in their homes and community. I felt a true generosity of spirit. There was no shortage of abundance there. I would joyfully return and visit them again. The wise man paused and then replied, Ah, then, you should enter this township with gladness in your heart, my friend, because I believe you will discover that the citizens of this town are very much the same end of that reading. Well, friends, as Dr. Jones state, and I quote, your consciousness goes before you to announce your coming. It determines how you will shape your life, your destiny. Depending on your consciousness, you will create an abundance of more than enough or an abundance of not enough in every area of your life, end of that quote. You see, when we become accountable for our consciousness, we become accountable for the life we create. It all starts with our thinking as everything begins in mind. Dr. Ernest Holmes, our founder of this great teaching, The Science of Mind, states in our textbook, we live in mind and it can only return to us what we think into it. No matter what we do, life will, the law, no matter what we do, law will always obtain, end quote. This we know as a law of mind in action. It is set in motion consciously, but its reaction is mechanical and mathematical. The law of mind, which is a natural law, is creative without caring what it creates. It is receptive without caring what it receives. It would do us well, therefore, to impress our minds with positive, constructive statements. And the use of specific affirmations can help us to establish a new way of thinking. And here are a few easy to remember ones which we can use to help us to build a prosperous state of mind. And I know Sandy gave us some good ones while she was speaking this morning, so I hope you made a mental note. But I will say these once, and then in part, so you can repeat after me, okay? My success does not depend upon outer conditions. I am prosperous, together. My success does not depend upon outer conditions. I am prosperous. 
I am letting go of limiting ideas and replacing them with thoughts of success and divine right action. I am prosperous together. I am letting go of limiting ideas and replacing them with thoughts of success and divine right action. I am prosperous. And this one is, I am one with the lavish abundance of the universe forever expanding. I am prosperous together. I am one with the lavish abundance of the universe forever expanding. I am prosperous. And friends, while for some of us, the affirmations alone may not work to build our consciousness of plenty, we can also take time to meditate daily. As well as there are also several passages of scripture in the Bible, if you prefer to read your Bibles. And these are referred to as prosperity promises. And I'll share some with you that we can read and confirm that it is the Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. And these are from the King James Version. And the first is from the third epistle of John and verse 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou may prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. And from Psalm 115, verse 4, the Lord shall increase you more and more, and your children, you and your children. And in Deuteronomy 26 and verse 11, thou shalt rejoice in every good, good thing which the Lord thy God hath given unto thee and unto thine house. And this one, which is one of my favorite scriptures, it says, it's from Malachi 3 and verse 10. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now, herewith saith the Lord of hosts, if I, will, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. I know us, a few of us know it, I see them repeating it. And friends, it is this last promise as written in Malachi which holds another vital key in our developing a prosperous state of mind. And it is the most important law of life which we need to understand. This is the law of giving and receiving, also called sowing and reaping in the Bible. Since all of life is in continual circulation, if we do not give back into life, we, are, we interfere with the circulatory activity which eventually leads to blockages in the flow of our good. In Luke 6 and verse 38, Jesus, the master teacher, said, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet, with all it shall be measured to you again. Giving then is the basis for building a consciousness of abundance. Just as a seed must first be planted for the tree to bear fruit, if we wish to reap a bountiful harvest, then we must give generously to life in the certain knowledge that we cannot outgive God. If you want to be convinced of this, then start a tithing program. This year, commit to doing so monthly or weekly and friends, a tithe is 10% of your income, which is given with love as an act of spiritual worship and in service to God. It should not be confused with any other act of giving which we do of our time or our talent. But when we tithe, we bring about a change in our mental attitude. Since tithing is an act of faith, and evidence of spiritual growth as it pertains to supply. What we would say is that we are, what we are doing is priming the pump. It will make you feel prosperous, and it is a continual reminder that the infinite source never runs out. 
As you tithe, so you prosper. In my own experience, I find that which I have goes further and what I have given comes back multiplied. So I'm able to do so much more and help in so many ways. And you may ask, to whom should a tithe be given? The answer is where we receive our spiritual inspiration and support. And for most of us, if not all of us, that would be right here at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living. Let us make the commitment in this 2020 year of plenty, knowing that when we tithe to where we receive from spirit, we are truly giving to God's work. As givers, it is also important that we be good receivers. We must learn to accept our good and be grateful for it. Learning to receive starts with gratitude and giving thanks for good already received. Simply say, saying thank you God for life, for the air we breathe, the food we eat, the services that are performed for us. Saying thanks for a compliment received. So many of us have challenges with that one. But let us be mindful that we are not denying someone else the joy of giving because we find it hard to be accepting. Giving thanks is a continual recognition of the infinite source of our good. As we acknowledge this good, we allow ourselves to remain in the flow of abundance and trust in the law of circulation. Dr. Deepak Chopra, in his book, The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success, states, nothing is static. Because your body and your mind and the universe are in constant and dynamic exchange, stopping the circulation of energy is like stopping the flow of blood. Whenever blood stops flowing, it begins to clot, to coagulate, to stagnate. That is why you must give and receive in order to keep wealth and affluence or anything you want in your life circulating in your life. End of that quote. Friends, when we put God first, recognizing our oneness with universal life, then our flow of good comes to us from expected and unexpected channels. Whether you desire an abundance of time, love, money, good health, or fulfilling relationships, as I said at the start, whatever this year of plenty means to you, the law of circulation operates exactly the same way. Your consciousness is the conductor that determines the flow of energy that manifests as the life you call your own. As for myself, I have decided that this is what plenty means to me. And I've come up with my own acoustic. And it means to me powerfully letting my energies navigate changes that this year brings. And I'll repeat that for you. P is for powerfully, L, letting my E is for energies, and N, navigate changes. And the T, that this Y for year brings. Knowing that as Dr. Holmes in the Science of Mind textbook states, here and now we are surrounded by and immersed in an infinite good. How much of this infinite good is ours? All of it. And how much of it may we use? As much as we can embody. Having a prosperous state of mind lets us be at peace with ourselves and others, at ease in all situations, knowing that our inner state of being cannot be disturbed by outer conditions. We are the only ones who determines how much abundance shall flow in, through, and out of our experience. Not your parents, nor your children, the government, your boss, your spouse, or the economy. 
So let us say yes to health, abundance, and supply of every good thing our picturing in our experience now. Here is to your success in 2020, year of plenty. Namaste.